when they put him in my arms. <laughs> I looked at him and he had this, he has this birthmark on his head and it was the only place that grew hair. Danielle called her son Boo from the moment she laid eyes on him in 2014. Drug addiction put DCYF in their lives in 2016. All four of Danielle's children were removed. Danielle was on a single-minded mission to get them back. Trying to prove myself. I wanted my kids back. And, uh, and then um, a year passed. The foster home wasn't working. According to Danielle, DCYF tried to terminate her parental rights, TPR, but the judge overruled. Instead, with Danielle's consent, the court granted guardianship of all four children to Danielle's mother, Sherry Connor, in Laconia. And as Danielle will later allege in a lawsuit, that's when the reports started. From the school, from the neighbors, from Danielle. Connor has never been identified as a suspect in this open homicide investigation of Boo's death. Every single time I saw him, they were covered in bruises, and they were unexplainable bruises. Nurses and teachers are often the first to report suspected abuse and neglect to DCYF. Danielle and her lawyer shared confidential school records with News 9 Investigates about Boo. Allegations consistent with her civil lawsuit against the state. Nine reports to DCYF from September to December 2019. Vomiting, scabs on his head, bruises on his neck, head, and arms. And nine days before Boo died, a chilling internal email from the school about DCYF, quote, so everything is fully documented. As I was concerned, they are not taking my reports and calls seriously. The state's answer, filed in Superior Court, states, quote, each report was investigated, CPSW assigned, numerous home visits occurred, interviews with the children, reporters, police, and witnesses. Resources were identified and offered. How can this organization that takes kids away from people for the very same thing put them in a situation that's even worse than what they ever encountered before. The calls to police were stacking up as well, according to the lawsuit. Neighbors reporting screaming children, a DCYF caseworker asking for backup before she goes to the home. Danielle, so many calls from Danielle, asking, pleading for a welfare check. And then on Christmas Eve 2019, a 911 call that couldn't be ignored. An unresponsive child at Blueberry Lane. Danielle remembers getting the news when a Laconia detective showed up at her job that night. I'm like, no, is there something wrong with my kids? And I started crying. He's like, please, just come with me for a minute. This is Boo's death certificate. Manner of death, homicide. Cause of death, blunt force trauma to the head and neck. Place of injury, decedent's home. Blueberry Lane, December 24th, 2019. To this day, not a single arrest. And Danielle says no information from the Attorney General's office other than it's an open, ongoing investigation. In the lawsuit, the state denies that it or its employees failed to properly investigate. Danielle's son was killed within days of Harmony Montgomery's alleged murder, but Danielle says no officials are speaking up for her little boy the way they did for Harmony. So she's posted signs like this all over Laconia, determined to hold someone accountable for her child's death. Governor Sununu was asked about the three-year-old murder case and recent civil lawsuit on March 8th during a press conference. We contacted, I think it was, I think it was his mom that, that originally contacted us, and obviously we sent our sympathies and, and condolences. It was just a, a horrible situation. Uh, there is a pending lawsuit, so we can't, there's only so much that the, I think the Attorney General's office or our, our office can really say about it while it's pending. So Danielle is leveraging the system before the law says it's too late. She's suing DCYF for damages. She filed in December last year, days before the statute of limitations ran out. 75 pages of heartache and frustration. 27 reports to DCYF starting in 2017. Most from professional reporters, teachers, nurses, police. Culminating in the final months of Boo's life with a flurry of calls from Danielle 
Danielle to DCYF, begging the agency to take action to protect her children. Here these people are saying that you're not fit enough to take care of your kids and we're going to take them from you, but we're going to protect them and we're going to do what you should have done. The Attorney General's office and police have never publicly identified a suspect, but Danielle's lawsuit states the emergency motion filed by DCYF on the day Boo died refers to Sherry Connor as the primary suspect. In response, the state does not refute it. Sherry Connor lives out of state now. Our calls and Facebook messages were not returned. Danielle was awarded full custody of her surviving sons and daughter in 2020, but says she will not rest until she gets justice for Boo. News 9 Investigates has been working on this story for months. It's been more than three years since Boo died, and there are still no answers. The last person to have legal custody of Boo was Sherry Connor. Not a single state agency will comment about Connor's status in this case. DHHS referred us to the Attorney General's office, citing active litigation. The Attorney General's spokesperson will not offer comment other than to say it's an active and open investigation, and they will not comment on open investigations. The Office of the Child Advocate tells News 9 there is a system mapping review, but could not confirm if Boo's case was selected for that review. We followed up with the governor's office asking if more changes at DCYF are needed in the wake of another child homicide in New Hampshire, after he said recently he had offered condolences but could not comment further. There is a state child fatality review committee that examines not accidental child deaths, but only after a case is closed. So Dennis Vaughn's murder has not been looked at. For News 9 Investigates, I'm Amy Cavino.